Welcome to discussion five in our sixth module on hypothesis testing. In this little discussion, we're going to examine the methodology for writing a one-tailed alternate hypothesis brought to you by the infamous Texas A&M University Commerce, Dr. Dog. Once more, the alternative hypothesis, HA, is the antithesis of the null hypothesis, HO. Uh, whatever HO is, HA is the other side of the argument, and we're fixing to consider three possibilities. Now, before you freak out because I put HA for alternate hypothesis rather than H1, there are a lot of different methodologies for writing the alternate hypotheses. HO a, as, as the null, HA is the alternate, H1 can be the alternate, H2 can be the alternate, H3 can be the alternate. Uh, of this case, I think I'll use a blend of HA and H1. As I stated, the alternative hypothesis is the antithesis of the null hypothesis. Whatever HO is, HA is the other side of the argument. Now, we just looked at the uh, null hypothesis mu equals 7 and the alternate hypothesis mu is not equal to 7. Now we're going to consider the second of three possibilities. And that is the null hypothesis being mu equals 7 and the alternate hypothesis being mu is greater than 7. For instance, uh, somebody might claim that the average electric bill is $200 a month. Well, you're not going to be worried if it's less than that. You'll be happy. But what if you get a $700 bill and it's more than that? Then you're going to be upset. And there are a lot of statistical tests in which we uh, ha examine a claim and we want to prove that that claim is too low or that the real mean is higher than the claim. You hear it called? Did you catch how I said that? We want to prove the mean is too low, or actually that the real mean is higher than the claim. As before, uh, I want you to look at the diagram. We have a confidence level. If we have a confidence level of 95% and our alternate hypothesis is mu is greater than 7, then everything below our critical boundary, which traps 95% of our data, is considered uh, to be mu, uh, the, the null uh, hypothesis. Everything to the right of that boundary is considered to be the alternate hypothesis. Just for your view and entertainment, there's little null hypothesis, and null hypothesis is everything from that boundary marker all the way back to the left, even way down on the end. All we're looking at is mu greater than 7. So if we had a 95% confidence interval here, we would actually have a boundary at 1.645, and everything with a z-score less than 1.645 would, uh, would be uh, the null hypothesis. Uh, again, the error is at this end. The error is everything above the single boundary. If we're claiming mu is greater than 7, then everything above that boundary of that statistical upper bounds that we've established turns out to be the alternate hypothesis. And for your view and entertainment, alpha right there, and there's little h1 or ha. you got to limber up, guys. You can't be so rigid. See, HO is the null, and this other one is the alternate hypothesis. Now let's consider the third case. Uh, the, the null hypothesis is mu equals 7. The alternate hypothesis is mu less than 7. In this case, we take this curve, and we've got to identify a lower bounds for mu equals 7. And our diagram would go something like this. We would have a lower bounds at whatever confidence level that we set, and everything to the right of that lower bounds is going to be the null hypothesis. And there the mysterious little null hypothesis appears. Look out there in that line as it continues far to the right. Mu plus 3 standard deviations. It could be mu plus 400 standard deviations to the right. We're not interested in the right. What we're looking at is error on the left side of the boundary. Oh, isn't this beautiful. The alpha level is here at the end. It is on the left side below the boundary. Now, I want you to look just a second at that alternate hypothesis, mu less than 7. Notice how the arrow parallels the alternate hypothesis. The arrow points to the left, and the arrow is on the left. 
And just to bring it all in perspective, there's little uh, alternate hypotheses picked up right there where we have error. I want you to notice again that we have two mutually exclusive cases. Either mu equals 7, which is everything from that uh, boundary up, or mu is less than 7, which is everything from that boundary down. Hang with me. Keep your brain working, and we're going to get all of this tied together for you. Thank you.